All right, we're back. Okay, I got this thing freed up, I think, when I left off. Get that one working. That one's working. And the transmission is working. Speedometer gear is not working, so the teeth are stripped off of the speedo gear down in there. Now, I don't know if I just did that or if they were already that way. But either way, it's not working now. But the tranny spins. So my guess is it probably has bad speedo gear. <laughs> that wasn't very tight. That's easy. I like that. These have a phenolic gear on them. Which is kind of a wood looking plastic if you don't know what phenolic is. Now, let's see here if we can get this to free up. At least you can kind of get these things turned sideways a little bit. Once you get them to move, these you will come out. There, see, so we move them out like this a little bit. There we go. So you get the things to move a little bit. And you kind of push them up with your thumb a little bit. Now, if you have to, you can tap one with a hammer here, but you might break the ear off. These are just pot metal, so they're only so strong. There we go. You can see how it's got spray down here where I previously sprayed it. So, and you can see how the teeth are all gone. So they're all worn off. But it is frozen too. And so this is fresh marks right here where I ripped it off here, but it was already gone anyway. So this driving is completely frozen up. It does not move. Now these are rebuildable. We can take the, uh, the gear out. It's on a shaft. And they make replacements. You can also find old original ones too that can be replaced. Or you can get one that has a bad gear or threads up in here. And you can take the shaft out and push it back in. There's a bushing in here. So you have to push the shaft out of the bushing, put it up in here, and then you can put the bushing back over. It's a collar that holds it in. So. Some stuff is repairable. Okay, now we go ahead and take the screw out here for the shaft. Get it moved. That's always a good sign. So this tranny was really, really rusty, but it doesn't seem to be rusty where it matters. See, this stuff is not rusty down in here, so that's good. Now this has a hole over here that you put a punch through, right here. And that will beat the shaft right out the side of the face over here comes right out this hole here. But you do have to make sure these are free before you do that. That's why you have to get those broken free. Okay, the other thing to do before I take that out is I'm going to lock this into two gears at once. Locks the tranny back up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this nut off over here while the tranny is not spinning. It makes it a little bit easier than just free spinning while you're trying to get the nut off. Here, I just use my zip gun for this. Now that appears to have a little bit of free play in here. So the chances are this ball bearing over here is not too good. Okay, the nut came right off. Socket. See, I use my two jaw puller here with an adapter goes into the main shaft. So you got a titty right here goes in a hole in the main shaft, and the puller centers off the center right there. So this protects the end of the shaft so you don't screw it up. Kind of important. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to put the puller in here. On the back side of the gear back in here. Get that we can kind of see a little bit. And then this here goes over the shaft right here, and I pull it right off. At least that's the plan. You just move the kicker spring out of the way with your fingers, I just shove it in there. This doesn't want to line up very well, but see what happens here. Push the 
spring out of the way so I can get to it. It popped off, it's come out real hard. So it's all crusty in there, obviously. So you can see all the grease and sand left over from blasting, old crap. It's tight on the shaft, not letting it come off. Because right now this is bottomed out. Alright, so there's our kicker gear came out. So this is an original style one with the old two keys in there, which you rarely see anymore. The kicker dogs are worn a little bit on the side. You can see how they're worn somewhat, but they're still functioning. And these teeth here still look good too. So this looks like a still usable kicker gear. The teeth are getting pretty worn right here though, you can see. but It still could be used, but I'm going to build a hot rod motor, so I'm going to put new shit in there. But I don't want to break my knee when I'm trying to kick a big inch motor over. Okay, so the bearing's not bad. The problem is the nut came off. So here's our nut. See how it's loose? See how the lock tab is still on there? Let me pull it up a little bit. See that lock tab is still there. That did not keep the nut from unscrewing though, see? So just because you have lock tabs does not mean that things don't come unscrewed. There's proof of it right there. That's why I Loctite stuff a lot and use a lock tab. But definitely Loctite's more important than the lock tab is. That had like one thread on it. And you can see all the threads are all screwed up in here. So this nut's wasted. And this is not even a normal size nut, it's a lot smaller than normal. So I'm assuming this is a bunch of stuff they did only for a year or two and they went to different hardware because I've already seen that a couple things already like that. Okay, so now we got the, now you can see the bearing in there. Now the bearing is still pretty loose. But it's in there. Okay, now these screws in here, I gotta try to get these out. And I gotta get these out here and I gotta pull this nut here off too. So this one has a lock tab on here, we gotta knock the tab over and then unscrew this one. And that holds the counter shaft in. Now right now we're still locked up in two gears so things aren't rotating. Good, it's better than finger tight. At least the counter shafts are still tight. Not much, but a little bit. See, this nut has a little bit of a dome to it. It's not just flat across like the regular nuts are. See, most of your nuts are uh, straight. Most of the nuts inside the gearbox are machined flat on both sides, like this one is. These early nuts seem to be, they have a slight dome shape to them. Other than that, they look about the same thing, but they're the same other than that. So like most things on old bikes, they are just more sculptured and slightly different looking than newer parts. Which doesn't really matter unless you're trying to do 100% restoration. Want everything perfect. Some people like that. Yeah, we got a sight, so you can't see what I'm doing now. I'm trying to get the lock tab off. Now, the lock tab has a little bit of flat spot in it. You got to kind of work it back and forth to get it up. It's squeezed up against the threads a little bit. So you can see I got a little D-shaped hole to it. So got to make sure you get to the D spot where it belongs. Okay, that's ready to come out. Now these I have to loosen up with an impact knocker. So I'm going to get my impact knocker. Okay, there's my bit for it. 
Of course, the impact knocker's not here right now. I'm going back to get it. Get freed up a little bit. All right. Let's move on to something else a little bit first. Okay, so now we go ahead and get the shift shaft out of here. Counter shaft's ready to come out once we get the uh, shifter forks out. Okay, this takes a drift punch. Now a drift punch is a punch that has a really long shank on it. They're made for going in big holes, you know, deep holes. Now this here has to go all the way to here, so that's going there this far. So we need to punch at least that much straight length. So that goes into the hole. There's a bunch of gravel and shit in there right now. Which is not good. Sounds pretty solid, and it's not moving yet. So I guess that it's kind of hard in there. Just like before, I'm going to take my punch right here. And I'm going to go a little bit, this next bigger punch. I'll go ahead and beat it back the other way. That sounds pretty hard, but you can see I did move in a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and move it, move it back and forth. Definitely not wanting to move. Okay, I'm gonna go back and get my drift punch. I'm gonna get an air nozzle where I can blow in this hole. So, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 